Hola guapas, and welcome to episode 18 of the Hola Guapa podcast. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm your host, Nisha Batesh. I'm also the founder and creative at Hola Guapa, a digital community of almost 12,000 artists and creatives from all over the world, a blog, a website, an online shop, podcast, and most recently, a small batch slow fashion line. On this podcast, we take creative conversations even further, sharing the real stories, tips, and tricks the artists in this community have found on their journey to success. And I am so excited to wrap up our second year on the Ola Guapa podcast with this very special bonus episode with abstract artist, mindfulness explorer, and yogi, Gina Gates. Gina is an OG member of the Ola Guapa community, so if you haven't already, make sure you go back and check out her written feature on the site posted back in March of 2020. Since then, Gina's career as an artist has flourished even further. And in this episode, we really get into it, chatting transparently about our experiences in art school as a true jumping off point for our creative careers. I love that we both have that in common. We chat about her passion for the practice of yoga and her yoga community and how she actually has leveraged both to catapult her career as an artist. But what I also love is we talk about the challenges that we're both facing as we actively transition our side hustles into full-time legitimate businesses. Guapas, there are so many real and authentic inspirational nuggets within this candid conversation that are going to uplift, motivate, and carry you into 2022, ready to up-level your art game and take on your creative career with confidence. So with that, let's get into the show. My name is Gina Gates. I'm an abstract painter from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I live in Northeast Minneapolis, which is the arts district of Minneapolis. And I've been painting for a while now. (laughs) I um, I went to school for painting. I have a bachelor's in fine art and I have a studio in an arts building in Minneapolis where I paint from there, um, I do works on canvas and paper and also have hosted some workshops that I'm hoping to expand coming up soon. Um, and then on top of that, I am a yoga instructor. I've been doing that for the last seven years. And so that definitely is a big influence in my painting. And there's a lot of crossover between my yoga practice, my and just this focus on mindfulness and awareness and self-exploration that then carries into my painting practice. So those overlap quite a bit and it's really beautiful to to see that happen and to share that with other people through workshops and um, classes and things like that. That's so cool. That's definitely something that I want to get into and and cover is kind of your crossover there because I think it's so interesting. Um, But first, I kind of want to go all the way back to the beginning. So I want to know when was the moment that you sort of knew you were born to create or that you were kind of you remember starting your creative journey as an artist, whether it be, you know, the yoga that came first or um, the painting. Good question. I feel like I've always been kind of uh, an artist type, like a very free spirited. Yeah. I'm an Enneagram four, so like the individualist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was always daydreaming in the corner as a child. <laughs> like, and really creative as a child, um, especially artistically and did a lot of drawing and painting. When I was growing up, I was voted most artistic in my eighth grade yearbook. So yes. that was my middle school claim. To that fame. counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's sure it was from the beginning. And I just really loved um, being tactile and using my hands and making things um, and just like really kind of getting dir- down and dirty. Um, so that was part of it. And then in high school, I didn't have a deep connection with creating um I was in band we had to play um, instruments I was in band and then I didn't take an art class 
but I thought I was like kind of connected to that. And in the back of my head, I would, I thought that that would be a path for me sometime in the future. And on my own, I would do some drawing and painting and sketching and things like that and sewing projects and crafts and all that. And then I went to a small liberal arts college in Minnesota, <clears throat> Southern Minnesota called St. Olaf College. And I went there not knowing, you know, classic liberal arts college student, not knowing their, what they wanted to major in for <laughs> like the first year. Yeah. But I took one drawing class and I was like, that's it. I'm oh, in. This is my life forever. I was so <laughs> pumped. I loved every minute of it. It was the best experience. And my professors were really engaging and they challenged me. And it was just this wave of um, just feeling like I was in the right place and that that was the, my path. And I, I loved being an art major. I would do it all over again so easily. Um, so I had such a great experience with that, especially a liberal arts art education because um, we got to learn so much, like every medium. I took painting classes, drawing, sculpture, woodworking, ceramics, photography, digital art. It was like the full gamut and everything and then you could like combine all of them and you could do, you know, you could make projects using like the ceramic studio and the painting studio together. And we had, they had hosted a lot of amazing shows for us where we would create collections and bodies of work for these shows. So um, in a lot of ways that helped me with uh, kind of figuring just it helped me establish this like holistic view of what it might look like to be an artist. There's definitely some things that I did not learn in art school that we could chat about. Um, but yeah. overall it was just like such a cool way to do college. Like every day I was, I worked what my, um, my college job was in the ceramic studio mixing clay and glazes and firing the kiln. So that was, I did that for like my work study job and that was amazing. And then it was just like, it was hard. It was really challenging. We'd be up, me and my friends would be up like, you know, pulling like all nighters, but like yeah. <laughs> painting and in those, in the studios. And it was pro it's like, it's taught me a lot about problem solving, which, I think is really important and just how to creatively solve problems on your own and put pieces together in a way that makes sense and that are purposeful so that I've definitely carried with me problem solving and multitasking and then like bringing purpose into your artwork. Yeah I mean I, I love kind of like that that journey and I love that you touch on sort of having that formal education even though it's different than you know, maybe going to sort of what you would consider like a regular college, but having that sort of um, formal art education, I think is always a really interesting topic because, um, you know, some, some people kind of think that you need to have it and other people think that you don't, but just hearing your, from your perspective, it, so, it seems like it taught you so much about not only kind of helping you navigate the medium that you wanted to move forward with, but also sort of some life skills that you could apply to your business as an entrepreneur moving forward as well. Totally. I think what was lacking a little bit were those business skills and like, okay, now what? Like you graduate art school. What, how do you become a professional artist? Like what yeah. is that? What are, what's the jumping off point between when you graduate with your degree and, you know, having an art career, like th that was all missing from my, from my um, art education. And I'm kind of curious if they have woven that in now with like social media and all this stuff that you really need to, to become an artist and to make it work um, for you. But yeah, it was, I, I would, I wouldn't ever say that you need an art, a, a, um, 
like an art educate what did you say you like a profession not professional yeah like just a more formal like art formal. education you know <laughs> yeah because <laughs> did you do a four year or how, how many years were you studying yeah it was four years um and since it was a liberal arts school it was I did all sorts of other classes too you know there's tons of other requirements with history and science and all that stuff so um but it was definitely a large part of my college experience was being in the art studios and creating a couple bodies of work that I'm still really proud of I think that that I was really pushed to create meaning in my work. And I'm a really, you know, I'm very drawn to aesthetics and like beauty and kind of in a simple way. And that was kind of like not enough. They're like, but why are you doing this? Why are you mm -hmm. using these materials in this process beyond mm -hmm. just intuition? So that put me out of my comfort zone. And now I'm kind of back in the place where I'm like, I can just paint following my intuition because it's intuitive. I believe in intuitive ab abstract art and my art is very expressive and based on my self exploration. So it doesn't always have to have this big overarching why um, because it still has purpose and it still is intentional. But that was a big theme in my art education, being able to speak on behalf of your work. Yeah, and it's kind of like that stigma that they say, like, you know, when you're walking through a gallery, it's like the deeper meaning. It can be like one black swipe on a white canvas, you know, but there's like this whole explanation behind it. And I think that it's cool that you like had the patience to go to school and to learn it sort of the right way or to understand the foundation of, you know, maybe what the more traditional way is to kind of have that meaning to support an, an idea, even if it is an abstract expression. And then also kind of through your own creative journey, really own that you don't need, you don't need that every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my, my bigger belief is just in learning and continuing to develop mm -hmm. your skills and to hone your skills. I think there's the, some concept, I, I don't, maybe you know what it is. It's like a hundred thousand hours or a million hours in your craft, something, a lot of hours <laughs> to become a master of your yeah. craft. Yeah, whatever it is, it's a lot of hours. <laughs> it's a lot of hours. And I think that is, if that's through a formal education and going, going to art school and learning from other artists and professors and being exposed to all these different types of art and different modalities and different ways to work, or if it's your own journey of exploration and education, it's both valid and good and it'll it'll take you there and if you want to keep pursuing being an artist but it's just that dedication to being a lifelong learner of your craft and to hone hone your skills and try different things and like explore make mistakes learn from them etc I think is a more important component to becoming a strong artist or making strong work yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I had a similar experience in college where I was kind of more on the fashion side of things. So like we, we had the similar exploratory period where it's like your first year you did drafting and textile and knitting and um, you kind of got to explore the whole world. You didn't just sort of stay in one category or within one medium. And what was cool about it for me is that, yeah, it pushed me in that in that way of crossover and really being able to find my path. And you know, I think that when you come out of school, there was so much that I, there was so much that I missed about school. Um, and I think that just being that learner and having that exposure to new ideas or new concepts, or even just, um, you know, new artists, new work around you, or just constantly being surrounded by, um, you know, people kind of on that same path as you um that was so inspiring to me is really what i missed and so um it's interesting to me that you've also found your passion with yoga because to me it seems like it's a similar concept where you're sort of always a student you're always learning you're always you know it's called a 
practice, right? So um, I want you to touch a little bit on, on that and kind of talk about how your two careers are coinciding and, and how, they, how that works together. I thought that it was something that I could kind of infuse my creativity into physically. Um, that wasn't art because right after I, I kind of had a, a little bit of a, um, after I graduated kind of like, I don't know if, it, if I can make it as an artist. I don't, was it like I the financial really... element that was concerning to you? Like was yoga going to be able to provide a little bit more stability financially or like what was that like fear right when you graduated? Yeah, it kind of felt like I'd worked so much and put so much time and effort into my senior show and my my artwork throughout the four years that it was almost a little burnout. Like I was like, yeah. I need a break yeah. from making art with this much vigor. Mm -hmm. And and then also it wasn't there was not that I didn't feel like there was that much opportunity for me to create art and make money mm -hmm. right after I graduated when I was 22 or whatever. I was just like, I need to find something else in the meantime to figure mm -hmm. out, um, you know, what, what my path is and I need to continue to learn and discover, discover things about myself so I can kind of become a better adult. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, totally. I, I did yoga teacher training and that has really been uh, a very present thing in my life for a long time now. I've taught, I don't know, four-ish classes a week for the last seven years. So wow. it's been a lot of yoga and a yeah. lot of learning. And I've had a really amazing opportunities being able to teach and um, being able to lead workshops and teacher trainings and study. Um, so I've done a lot of different yoga teacher trainings and expanded my knowledge with that over the last years. And that was kind of my big focus. I kind of went from this extreme attention and detail and like hyper focus to achieving these art goals in college and then it kind of switched over and I was like super into my yoga practice and teaching and getting trained in doing, you know, 500 hour teacher training and that kind of thing. And um, really growing in this community that, that I'm in still currently. So that was, that was a big focus of mine. And then just about probably three years ago, um, is when I started reintegrating in a serious way art back into my back into my routine and my day and my life and I don't really remember what made what was the switch with that um, I made jewelry for a while with a friend of mine and then we are a little jewelry business we signed a lease for a studio and then when we got the studio I wanted to only use the studio for painting basically <laughs> and slowly kind of transitioned away from the jewelry business and to focus on painting and then it just kind of kept growing from there and I did a couple shows I made a couple collections but it wasn't until um, two years ago so January 2020 is when I like officially created a business for my art and um, last summer, like the pandemic summer, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was when I put a shop on my website for the first time. So, and I made my website just maybe six months before that. So everything has kind of been happening more intentionally directed to back into the, the art part of my life in the last few years. That's so. like, I love that you share all of this because, okay, there's so much that I want to talk about. So first of all, <laughs> I think that what is really cool is like what I kind of got was that when you graduated, there was almost this feeling of like being burnt out and sort of feeling lonely and kind of not having that like that drive to maybe create art. And so you sort of gravitated, gravitated to this world of yoga that was really centered around like being grounded and being refueled and community and kind of 
filling that gap there. And then it's almost like a teeter totter back and forth ever since. And what's, what I love about that is like, I think that people maybe have the perception that you have to do one thing um, to be successful at it. Or like, they think that maybe artists don't have side hustles or that maybe their full-time career is considered their side hustle. I think that there's just so many things that you can do to have, you know, that more traditional career where you have financial stability while you're growing your art business or vice versa. Like I, and it, what I'm loving about having some of these conversations on um, this podcast is that women are finding ways to be creative so that it's not just like black and white. It's not like one's financial and one is kind of fueling a bigger, like, fulfillment for them it's almost that they're feeding each other so like you know on former podcasts i've interviewed like women that are graphic designers and then their side hustle is starting their own like clothing line and with you it seems like it's the same thing where it's not you're not like turning off a switch you're it they're sort of like symbiotic yeah i think when i was um if i think back to like five or six years ago i think in my head, I thought it could be one thing or the other. Like yeah. either I was focused on my art and growing that and or yoga. And now I just find, I feel really grateful that it's taken me a while, but I'm finally come, you know, the past two years, I've been able to figure out how to blend these two things that I really love. And I even remember when I was going through yoga teacher training, being like, could it really be my life where I could teach yoga and make art and like that? Yeah. It? And it's like, <laughs> yes, it can. And it will be. And you have I to work that. your ass off and yeah. do all the things, you know, get there, get the, like follow the path and go on the roller coaster financially, emotionally, spiritually <laughs> to get there. But then it's like, it's real. I do feel really grateful to be able to, have the opportunity to do things that I really, really love and that fill me up and that I'm really kind of devoted to um, learn, continuing to learn about and that somehow I can also like make money doing those two things is like the icing on the cake. It's really a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, I, I've, for a while now it's been like yoga has been the most the more um prevalent or I spend more hours of because I also um was managing a studio or am managing a studio and um so I do more behind the scenes too in the yoga in the yoga studio and that's more of my main job and art has been like the side but with COVID I was unemployed for a while the yeah. art was way bigger taking yeah. more time and now it's kind of like maybe taking gonna be taking a bit more time yeah but I mean that's that's life right like things come and go and they sort of like ebb and flow like that it's not just like an on and off switch which I think is really cool to speak to because to your point like I think five or six years ago I might have thought the same thing like well, I can't work a nine to five and also build my own business, but it's like, you really can. And not only can you do it, but they can sort of help to like inform, one can help to inform the other. And so I think being able to like talk about that a little bit more and just be a little bit more transparent about that and how, honestly, how many women I've found who are doing it that way versus just like solely dedicating themselves to one thing day in and day out. And that's, you know, what's creating success, which is what I always thought looking at Instagram feeds and sort of seeing this altered reality or like skewed perspective of, you know, how are they doing it? I was always trying to figure out like, how is she doing it? Like, how is every painting sold? And she posts it and it's sold like how, and it's, to me, it's like, I love having these conversations that feel so transparent because if somebody hears it and they're sort of five years ago, starting their creative journey, they can really understand from, you know, somebody who's five or six years down the road that you can do it. And not only can you do it, but it can be even better that way. Totally. And I just remember with my yoga community, I would have a hard time sharing with them that I was an artist. I oh, wouldn't yeah. even bring it up. I wouldn't talk about it. I Why? wouldn't promote myself I don't know I, I think in my head my two worlds were kind of okay. separate and then people that I knew through art it felt like 
I don't know. It felt this, like, I felt a disconnect between the two things for wow, so long. Oh, that's so interesting. That I, okay. I didn't even, like, meld them together. And now I'm like, I'm an artist. I'm a yoga teacher. Like, everyone, I I don't hold, hold back anymore. And so if that was, like, a piece of advice I could give to someone um, would just be to share, share who you are with people and share what you're doing. Even if that just means telling a friend or telling family members or um, starting a conversation like, oh yeah, I also do this on the side just to share your passions. And if it's something you want, you want to like grow, then you have to talk about it and tell people because when I, when I did start to share it with my community and with my yoga students and friends, they were so hyped to support me. I've sold so many paintings to people that I know from yoga who teach with me or who are my students. And like, they are just, it's my community. So I don't yeah, know why I was holding, holding that back. And so it's exciting when people find out they're like, I didn't know you were a painter. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a painter. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm finding more confidence in just expressing myself as an artist. And because I, I know I'm an artist, I went to school. I, I feel like I always though, people will ask me about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm an artist. I went to school for art. And it's like, I don't have to say that last part to, you know, I'm an right. artist regardless of my, art education right because it's what I am and it's who I am yeah no I, I absolutely love that Rossi yeah she said something that I was like oh I gotta write that down <laughs> <laughs> and it was like an artist is not what I choose to do an artist is who I am I'm yeah. an artist so yeah it's like accept it or get the fuck out you know yeah, <laughs> this yeah is like me yeah so let's go. That's so cool. And, and it is interesting that at first you were sort of more hesitant to kind of blend those two worlds because what I was thinking is they coincide so well. Like you have, you know, you, you mentioned community, but it's also like they're like-minded, you know? And so for, for me, when I look at your art, it's just sort of this beautiful organic, like emotion full of color and um I think that but the colors are very calming and, and very soothing it's not really like um loud or abrupt or in your face or anything like that it's very like to me it, it feels like yoga you know um it feels like that feeling that you get you know when you're done and you're lying in shavasana and you've sort of just had you're like kind of just taking your deep breaths at the end of class and so I feel like they you have your audience right there in front of you so it's funny that once you start sharing and talking and feeling more confident to just say, yeah, I'm an artist. I'm an artist too, you know, not even like, I think it's interesting because I read this book called Girl Stop Apologizing. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's a great book. And it talks about, um, you know, how sometimes we play our biggest dreams down really small. And so you, when you're introducing yourself, you'll say something like, um, you know, like, yeah, and I'm an artist on the side too. I do a little bit of art on the side, but it's like, that's your biggest burning passion inside of you. And you, you make it sound so small. And so I think it's a really interesting practice and something to something that's really great to talk about and kind of dive a little bit deeper into is how we can we can shrink sometimes and we end up being more successful the more that we share and the more that we open up yes a hundred percent that like hits the nail on the head for me especially right now I'm kind of moving into a space where I'm hoping to um pursue being a, a full-time artist sometime and and sometime soon. <laughs> I feel like it's hard to even say that because I'm so, you know, there is just this like fear of failure. There is what, what am I, why am I doing this? You know, it's a big yeah. scary leap and it's one that I do want to make. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm kind of going through a lot of barriers right now mentally that you, you know, something like that, you just mentioned of like uh, almost like shrinking yourself down or telling people about it and you're like oh we'll see how it goes I yeah. don't know yes exactly. I can always find another job if mm -hmm. it doesn't work out because whatever so I've been challenging, my, challenging myself to really stand up for and like just with conviction be like yep. this is what I want this is what's going to happen I truly believe that I can 
make six figures painting yeah. and watch um, my smoke. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you know, really practicing this like manifesting and like journaling and just really believing in myself and telling myself that I can. And that's tough. It's like all this, you got to practice what you preach kind of thing. I talk to my yoga students all the time about moving through barriers and following your intuition and working through hard things, you know, trusting yourself and being open to the process. And so I'm having, I'm having to do that with myself and it's, it's nerve wracking, but I'm excited too. I love that. I, I know that you mentioned um, you had only really started like your business side of things two years ago. Can you talk about what that means? Because I think something for me that was really, I guess, hard, but more so just like challenging or I guess unexpected was everything that goes into actually officially turning your art into a business. And I think it's so easy for artists to just decide that it's keep it as a hobby and just decide that it's something that they want to create on the side. And if they want to sell a few, they sell a few, but when you actually become an entrepreneur and you're become a businesswoman and you have to do all the official things that that takes, um, can you talk a little bit about that? What surprised you the most kind of what went into that process? I know you also talked about starting your website. Did you hire an agency? Did you do it yourself? Um, just talking a little bit about kind of the more, uh, administrative things, I guess, that go into launching. Yeah, I'm still learning so much. I've learned so much over the last 18 months. It's unbelievable. And I've, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to keep learning and keep getting better. But I think what, what was happening is I was selling paintings here and there previously, you know, a, a couple every year or but I wasn't really making enough money to make it a business and then all of a sudden I was because I was putting time and energy and effort into um, you know I made an Instagram account devoted to my art which was like a game changer I'm so glad I did that because then I knew the people who were viewing my that Instagram page were there because they were interested in supporting me as, my, as an artist and seeing my artwork. So that gave me a little more freedom to just put it out there and to share my art on that platform um, with more confidence because they were there to follow Gina Gates art, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so after I did that and started painting more regularly and more kind of intentionally with the intent to put the work, the painting out into the world by selling it, hopefully. Um, then I was like, okay, let's make this official because I want to um, be able to track this really clearly and to, to know what's working, what's not working. So I decided to do that in January of 2020, um, just to kind of start the year fresh. And I, you know, did all the like filing for a business on the Minnesota website. I don't know. And then I opened up a bank account for my business, which was probably, that was another really crucial thing. And that I would encourage anyone to do, even if you have, if, even if it's just a hobby, but I transferred, I think it was a thousand dollars into my business account just to kind of like think of that I had something in yeah. there. Yeah. And then I had my car that I would use to buy my art supplies and use to um, go to UPS and that kind of thing. And so that made it really clear to track how much I was spending, how much I was making. Um, I set up my web shop on my website, which web, my website I use through Squarespace. And um, when I first set it up, I hired um someone she was going through design school at the university of minnesota and she was a yoga student of mine oh i love and that she was like 18 and she went in and just made my website pretty much like what it is now made it super beautiful and um kind of branded and so that was awesome because that was a barrier for me i was like i don't know how to do that and i don't really want to learn um but then <laughs> Yeah. Outsource, <laughs> outsource. <laughs> yes. 
And then actually like the more I've worked with Squarespace now, now I kind of am familiar with it and I think it's pretty user friendly. And so now I, I do all of the updating um, and post everything on there myself. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think once I set up those two things, like officially made it a business, set up my Instagram account and then set up my bank account. I was like, we're good to go. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 And then it felt official and I felt like I could really lean into promoting it on social media and really develop um, some bodies of work. So that's kind of how I've done it since then as I've painted specific collections and then you know, worked on a collection for a month or two and then kind of promote it to do a big release or um, yeah, release date on my website. And then I've kind of slowly started to create an email list and it's just kind of organically grown from there. It was really exciting to sell my first painting to a stranger. Yes, that's my always website. the best feeling. That was a really big indicator for me that I was like, doing something right that people were seeing my work and liking it mm -hmm. and it wasn't just like my besties and my parents yeah. <laughs> yep. um and then you know shipping paintings across the country to people that I don't know and um all of that has just been so exciting and such a good learning experience and like I said there's still so much to learn I need to there's a lot of systems that I still want to get in place like how to package something more consistently and um yeah things like that that are more on the business side like um mailing mailing lists emails automating yeah, emails there's, like, there's always so much. so much to learn oh my gosh it it never ends honestly <laughs> so yeah. I think that there's kind of I like that you almost refer to challenges as barriers like it's something that you can overcome, you know, obviously it's just a barrier. <laughs> um, just a so bump in the road. <laughs> just a bump in the road. It's a really cool way of looking at it. And I know um, something that you also promote on your website and your Instagram is like commissioned base work. So for somebody looking to start their own business or sort of interested in painting, can you walk us through, or I mean, anything for commission, it could really be any medium, but I know you're just painting um, in particular. What would that process look like or what does it look like for you? Yeah, that's a that's also one that I feel like I've created a good system around. Um, I have a tab on my website where people can inquire and it lists kind of the step by step process outlines the step by step process for the client or for the um, collector. And then so I get an email with an inquiry and Usually it's like, I want a commission piece. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. And so um, then I have a series of questions that I typically send the collector. And apart from, you know, usually we will decide on the size and the price and the, if they want it on canvas or paper or wood panel um, and where they're putting it in their house. And then I send them a series of questions that are more specific and kind of gets them thinking about the piece with more intention and it allows me to see their personality come through a little bit more um, like a couple of those questions are um, do you have a favorite color palette that you're drawn to and then um, what are a few words that you how do you want to feel when you look at this painting mm. and that one really is fun to see what they um, come up with. It's like, what energy do you want? How, what energy can I bring to you in your space um, and in your life? And so, and there's a couple other questions in there. Um, like, what is your space? How do you feel when you're in your space? How do you want your home to feel? Um, and so I use all that information and a little bit of information about them to kind of in my head, just visualize. Most people give me a lot of artistic freedom, which is really nice. And I think I've built up trust with um, commission pieces up to this point where people, if they've seen my work then, and they've seen my commission pieces, they know that they can kind of 
hand over the reins a bit. Yeah, I can imagine that that would be um, a little bit intimidating as an abstract artist specifically, because it's not like somebody who um, sort of is practiced in commissioned pieces where it's like typically you see that artist who's like send me a picture of your dog and you know they use it as a reference and they apply their own style or their own techniques and that's why you go to them specifically but with abstract it's it's very uh insightful for you to kind of share some of those questions because I think if anybody's looking to go into that world or take that next step or, or sort of pivot their business in that way that's a really great way to do it is providing this questionnaire almost or this sort of design survey where you know that that collector can go ahead and describe feelings yeah and people I mean people have really beautiful ideas to about why or they have really beautiful concepts of why they want to commission painting maybe it's a location that they care about and they'll provide a photo of that and that's a good reference or starting off point or one person she described her relationship with her boyfriend and how it's grown and she really wanted that energy and their their journey and their path reflected and represented in the piece so i think it's kind of it's, it's good when people already know my style and they know they like my artwork and they can also infuse kind of their, um, infuse some of their energy into kind of the intention. And then it really feels like a collaboration. Yeah. That's sometimes I'll write like in pencil before I start, I'll write like a little note to the person on the can on the blank canvas or just like write some of those words down so the energy is really infused into the piece. Oh my god, of, I love that. You know, it's what like a they little want. secret. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. That yeah, I think it's um, always interesting talking about like kind of the way that different artists sort of create revenue streams as well through like the different facets of, you know, it's not just create a painting and put it up online. It's not just commission pieces. And I know you've also expanded into working on um, handbags and totes and some other more textile items that people can wear around and out into the world. And I am so excited that we are getting to carry um, your tote bags on the Guapa Gal shop very soon. So I want to talk a little bit about those pieces as well and um, kind of of, you know our partnership there as well so um just diving yeah. in a little bit deeper yeah go ahead <laughs> so I kind of have just been exploring this you know thinking about um pursuing doing art full-time and making it a career it's exactly what you said like trying to figure out different um different avenues for to be able to create and share that work and to find what my audience and what people who love my artwork want and how I can kind of create abstract art in different products and in different ways has been another really cool like problem solving creativity um, you know challenge for me so I did last Christmas I did ornaments and they're they were a big hit and they were so beautiful and maybe we can get those into the go off the shop oh yes holiday <laughs> season yeah it's not too early to start thinking about that <laughs> um so I did those and I've I've done a couple other a couple tried a couple other products and things like that um but yeah then I was just thinking about canvas tote bags and they're made out of canvas so yeah I like I'm gonna it. order a couple and see what it's like to paint on canvas tote bags and it's been really fun just to have this other surface to play around with and to figure out the mediums that work and the, you know, textures that work and kind of the process behind that. Um, so this summer I did two different colorways. I did like a blurred tone bluish one and then uh, kind of like a deserty color palette, which I'm really, you know, <laughs> if you know my work, I love the desert. I love desert vibes. Um, being from Minnesota and all, it doesn't yeah. make that much sense. But I, did, I was like, I can't wait to make a really bright pink and pastel one for the guapa gals out there because yes. it's just like that energy is like uh, my work and my color palette is fairly muted. It's definitely, like you said, there's color in it, but it's kind of toned down in a way. And sometimes I'll do a couple pops of color here and there that are more bright. 
Um, but it's fun with the bags and with other things I can kind of push that a little farther yeah. out of my comfort zone and do something like super bright or like black and white or something like that, that I would typically wouldn't work with. So it's another good reason that I, to like keep pushing myself to, to use different, different color palettes. Awesome. I, I love that. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the shop and, and, you know, share, continue sharing you and your art with, with my community and our community. Um, is there anything kind of, as we wrap up that you, is it like a book, a podcast, a resource that you have been reading that you would want to share? Um, anything that you've learned kind of along your journey, any advice that you could give? Do we have another hour? To talk I know. <laughs> um, wow, there's been a lot of resources that I've used over the last um, two years to really learn and get to the point that I've gotten to now. And so a couple of those that I'll share. One is that um, last year I enrolled in a course through an artist named Allison James, and she's an abstract artist based in Georgia. Um, and that course provided a community of artists. We did like a group chat thing and that was amazing. Just learning from other artists and connecting with them and being able to ask questions and have people answer them. Like, how have you shipped this size of print? And then, you know, people who are in your same shoes going through that same, um, process they, you know, you can brainstorm things together. And that's been really supportive, just knowing other people kind of in my same position as an emerging artist um, and bouncing ideas off of that. And then also another artist, Emily Jeffords. She has a huge community of artists. It's massive. And she has courses and a podcast and all this, all this stuff. Um, and I'll have so, to check both of them out. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll really like Alice and James's work because it's really bold, vibrant color palette. And Emily Jeffers just has, she is a very um, rich community and a lot of good information. So I just, as a lifelong learner, I'm always like, you know, tuning in to Instagram lives that talk about how to promote a release or how to package up a painting and how to ship internationally and how to yeah. make an Instagram reel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I'm just kind of always trying to absorb as much as I can. And the, another thing, like I mentioned before, I've made so many friends on Instagram who are other artists that I just follow their page and interact with their paintings if I see pieces of theirs that I love and then I'll say it you know I'll be like hey this is amazing we should connect and um you know just start up a connection and conversation with artists that I really admire so that's been awesome there's a couple local artists here in Minneapolis that I feel really connected to and really um, grateful for their friendship and support um, and then also there's artists from all over the country that have just been really amazing support for me, even though I've never met them and I hope I can someday. Um, but that's been really special just to kind of be able to like hype up their work and keep, keep it going. You know, we got to support each other out here. <laughs> yeah. I love those tech tips and tricks or resources, whatever you want to call them, because I think they're so tangible, you know, like sign up for workshops, like tune in to the live. Like, you know, I think that often this, we kind of are inundated with so, so much information that we don't know what to do. So we just do nothing. And I think it's refreshing to hear that, that you're really on purpose and consuming content that is going to help you grow your business and help, help educate you. And then I think the other piece of just reaching out to reaching out to people who are doing the same thing that you're doing and telling them how much you love their work. I mean, that's so simple, but it's really always like one of my biggest takeaways is like, you can't get what you don't give. And I think that is, that is just that 
infinite circle of, um, you know, sharing and, and putting your energy and your attention towards other artists who are on the same path as you. And I think that you're, you're just inevitably going to start getting all of that love back as well. Right. It's like karma, right? Like you have yeah. to art karma. If, yeah. <laughs> if you want to feel that love and support, then you have to play a part in that too. And yep. share that with artists that you admire, tell them that you love their work and are supporting them. I think about that too, about like buying from artists. Yeah. It's like, you have to buy from artists if you expect anyone to buy your art. It, it all goes around. Yeah. But one thing that I do have something that I wanted to share that I'm excited about. Yeah. We still, we still have some time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so another thing that I've been kind of dab dipping my toes into, and I'm really excited about sharing is um, workshops and hosting workshops. I did a handful of virtual workshops um, over the last year or so, and I had different co co-hosts and um, now and I'm going to, um, my next thing is to host a couple in-person workshops in Minneapolis um, in my studio. So abstract painting workshops and kind of, again, mixing those two, like mindfulness practice and journaling and setting intention and breathing um, with the process of painting and adding layers and um, going through that. So I'm pretty excited about that and how I that I love will that turn out yeah yeah I was gonna say you know it would be really cool as like if you did a yoga practice and then right after you had them paint how they were feeling about the experience yeah I mean also <laughs> like my dream would be to lead a retreat to yeah. yoga and art Ugh, amazing it. it's the perfect combo I love that goal and I can't wait to come to your retreat one day because I know you're gonna make it happen Yes, I have so many big dreams. So just watch out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's perfect. That is a perfect way, I think, to wrap this conversation. Thank you <laughs> so much for coming and chatting. I, I love learning so much about your process and about your whole creative journey. And I think that there's so many valuable nuggets of information kind of within, within this conversation. So I definitely want to go back and listen. And I hope that everybody who's listening is really enjoying and, and taking a lot of value from it as well. Yay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Gina Gates. I hope you gained as much value and inspiration from her story as I did. If you love what you heard, please make sure you rate and review this episode on Apple Music and or Spotify. It really helps to spread episodes like this one to other creatives looking for their daily dose of inspiration, and I would be forever grateful. But before we go, if you haven't already, make sure you head over to olaguapa.com to check out and shop from the Guapa Gal collection of female-owned and artist-made brands just in time for all your holiday shopping and gifting needs. You will even find a very special hand-painted tote created by the very talented Gina Gates. And you already know I'm going to be carrying this baby to the farmer's market, art supply shop, and more. So head over to olaguapa.com and discover your new favorite female-owned and artist-made brands today. With that, have a beautiful week, Wappas. As always, sending you tons of inspiration and lots and lots of love.